right so let us come back and do the last topic of your alkaline earth metal that is compounds of calcium so we have studied a lot about beryllium magnesium now about calcium so when i have to speak about calcium we're going to study about compounds which is the first compound is limestone what is the formula for limestone it is calcium carbonate the next one we're going to study about quicklime what is quicklime formula it is calcium oxide then we're going to study about lime water or slaked lime slaked lime the formula is calcium hydroxide lime water we're also going to study correct yes so this is these are the compounds now let's start so when i have to speak about calcium carbonate how can i prepare now let me uh, write we're going to prepare limestone so for preparing limestone i'm going to take slaked lime right to this we are going to add carbon dioxide then what will happen calcium carbonate is out and water this is the preparation now this comes this is a precipitate now the same thing if i have to prepare quick lime simple isn't it so i'm going to take calcium carbonate and i'm going to heat it what temperature almost around 1170 kelvin temperature i'm going to heat 1170 to 1230 kelvin or something almost to that then this dissociates into calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide simple isn't it nothing else we're just decomposing it now let's come back and see certain reactions of calcium carbonate or oh sorry certain reactions of uh, quick lime that is calcium oxide this is your calcium oxide this is your uh, limestone and uh, we'll see some more reactions right let's see the reactions of calcium oxide so when i have to speak about the reaction of calcium oxide if it reacts with water simplest reaction what is that this is again going to form water is something you can write let us hoh it's going to form calcium hydroxide right so this is calcium hydroxide and your water fine so next important thing if it reacts with silica that is sand it's going to form calcium silicate which comes out in the form of a slag isn't it so in uh, your metallurgy of uh, iron calcium silicate now the same thing if calcium oxide reacts with p4o10 with phosphorus fine so what is the compound formed simple isn't it nothing to remember just memorize take calcium right here phosphate write it as po4 phosphate valency is 3 write this calcium valency is 2 write this calcium phosphate now here uh, phosphorus okay now i need to balance this so make this calcium if i have to take 2 now let's see this 4 3 is a 12 okay then this also becomes 2 2 calciums now let's see the oxygens 4 3 is a 12 4 3 is a 12 10 plus 2 12 phosphorus 3 yes okay this is the reaction right now let's come back and learn about slaked lime so what is slaked lime we have, we have started with the compounds of calcium we have studied what is quick lime <clears throat> what is limestone on this now when it comes to slaked lime simple isn't it it is also called as calcium hydroxide right so this calcium hydroxide when i have to speak about calcium let us see the preparation first so in the preparation i am going to take quick lime this is quick lime to this quick lime we are going to add water when you add water what will happen calcium hydroxide that is your slate lime is formed now what is important here this is quite common reaction so what is important is this slate lime when you have two things you need to remember here when this forms a suspension part right that means during the formation of suspension the hydrogen gas is released that means this hydrogen gas is released here and this acts as a suspension then we call it as <coughs> milk of lime right right remember that so we call this suspension as milk of lime the same thing if it is in the form of a clear solution clear solution if you get that then i call this as lime water right simple as that 
then yeah so this calcium hydroxide slake lime the important uh, application of slake lime is right it, it is it can be used to prepare bleaching powder right so we were going to take that slake lime let us see the application part of that so if in the reaction if they give you remember it's calcium hydroxide it's going to combine with chlorine and it's going to form three products the first one calcium suppose if i take two moles of this calcium chloride is formed cacl2 is formed after that calcium oxychloride that is calcium oxychloride taken twice and the leftover is water right so this is two this is also be two so this is your bleaching powder which you have prepared so calcium hydroxide we are using it to prepare bleaching powder one of the applications simple now let's come back and finish off the chapter by studying uh, the, the two more compounds that is pop as well as your calcium carbide One more thing you should remember in uh, slake lime is slaking of lime. If they ask you what is slaking of lime, nothing. It is a limited, it is or it is an addition of water. That is a limited addition of water to quick lime. It's called slaking of lime. Remember that once again. It is a limited addition of water to quick lime. It's called slaking of lime. That is a simple definition. Remember that. So let's come back and do POP preparation. Right now, let's come back and learn about POP, the simplest topic. So, what is POP? Plaster of Paris. It is also called as calcium sulfate hemihydrate. Right. So, the name is calcium sulfate hemihydrate. What is hemihydrate? Hemihydrate is nothing but half H2O. Right. So, how should we prepare? Like, I can. I'll take both the ways. If I take gypsum, if I am going to heat this correct it's going to form pop to the same pop if you add water it will form gypsum simple okay so let us write the reaction now calcium sulfate hemihydrate caso for half h2o is pop right so because it is half h2o it is called hemihydrate the same pop if i'm going to add 3 by 2 water molecules see here to pop i'm adding water molecule when you add 3 by 2 water molecules what will happen this half and this half right t plus 1 4 4 by 2 is 2 isn't it so what do i get calcium sulfate dot 2 h2o so this is your gypsum this is what you get now the same thing now suppose if i'm this whole thing happens at 373 kelvin now the same thing suppose if i'm heating this uh, plaster of paris above 390 kelvin if i'm heating it above 390 kelvin then it's going to set up or it's going to lose this water of crystallization about 390 kelvin and it will form in, into a hard mass that burnt plaster is called pla like that particular mass or hard mass is called burnt plaster remember that so above beyond 390 start heating so it will lose this water once water of crystallization is lost it will become a hard mass that is called burnt plaster Now let's see one question based on calcium carbide. So one quite common question asked. Let's see the reason first. What is this? Why should calcium carbide be stored in sealed container? So for that, let us see the preparation of calcium carbide. So when I have to speak about calcium carbide preparation, so how is this prepared? First, I'm going to take quick lime, calcium oxide. To this, I'm going to add coke, carbon. Right. So what is it going to form? Let me take three moles of this then automatically it becomes CaC2 so two of this picks up the CaC2 calcium carbide and the leftover how many are there one isn't it that comes out as carbon monoxide that's it right now what do they ask sealed container right we well, let us read the reason why sealed container this calcium carbide which is prepared suppose if this combines or if it is exposed to moisture water right so immediately what happens this calcium carbide it's going to absorb moisture this particular thing it's going to absorb water present in the atmosphere or to moisture and it's going to form calcium hydroxide right calcium this is written as HOH isn't it so calcium hydroxide what is left out it is left left out is C2H2 
so because of the formation of calcium hydroxide or lime water we they, they just uh, recommend to store calcium carbide in sealed containers right now with this have completed uh, your uh, the s block uh, elements perfectly cement i think you can study nothing much information you can study the composition of that now let us start solving the neat questions i'll be doing almost 300 questions of for this chapter 300 questions one one will be each one will be relating to the concept which i have thought